we're not talking about just your visual components of your brand. We're talking about the story that your community is telling about your business, right? So your brand is not what you say about your business to your community. It's what your community says about it. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franzen. What's up, Remarkables? Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Stephen Franzen. And I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. Super stoked to be with you guys here today in my favorite time of the year. Dr. Pete, I love fall. I love September in New England. Gorgeous weather, warm water, great surf. I am super energized for today's episode. Psyched about what we're talking about. Always psyched to be talking to you. And uh, so psyched to be sharing this incredibly important message on marketing and marketing messaging and market promising. And, and what is your brand promise? What is your brand message? What is the purpose of your business? Ultimately, Dr. Pete, it all, all of these things come together and they create what's known as your brand. Yeah, I mean, your brand is, um, is who you are. I remember, um, you know, just as we first started into practice, I remember the conversation with my coach at the time when I was choosing the name of my practice, which is interesting. Um, I, I was, I, my, the name of the practice that I chose was Lifetime Chiropractic. And um, I got the, I got the, the ax on that. And I remember sitting down with my coach and asking like, why, why wouldn't, why wouldn't that be the, the appropriate name was lifetime chiropractic. And he was talking, he just simply said, you know, I think it's, it's a great idea, but, um, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard for your community to embrace that. And so we want to potentially consider going in a different, different route. We ended up embracing revolution chiropractic, which was the revolution was, that we were turning people's lives around. That was what my vision was. What when people came to my practice, what we were going to do was turn their lives around. So, you know, when you, when we were talking about what we're going to be this episode specifically, what we're going to be discussing today is, you know, I thought about how important it was. And I'm so grateful that I had someone in my life who was just had been down the road ahead of me and looking back and saying, Hey, I love the heart of that. That makes a lot of sense because you want people to be under chiropractic care for a lifetime. That is what your product is. That is what the outcome that you want to create without being able to put all this, this language together. You know, now we know what, what was going on there, but I didn't know at the time. But I, but I embraced that, you know, that pushback. And what I love was when we, able, when we embraced the term revolution, it, it was so aligned with me. That's right. And from that point on, every time I showed up to every meeting, every talk, every huddle, everything, it was revolution was at the center of it. What are we doing? We're creating a revolution for people. We're creating a revolution. We came from the highest level in healthcare all the way down to the practical baby, you know, just going through our office. And so your brand is so important, but it also has to be a reflection of who you are, who you are as a human being, who, you're, who you are at the core uh, of why you do what you do, Dr. Steven. And so I know we're going to unpack some, some concepts, some elements of that today. I just wanted to share that story as we're getting going here because it is important that, that you are understanding the significance and the value of any brand that you create. I know, Dr. Steven, you've created many brands as well um, and how important this is to get it right. So uh, let's, uh, let's dig in. Yeah. So, you know, I love the, this conversation when it comes to marketing. I mean, we started this conversation, we were talking about the um, five counterintuitive opportunities that we're facing right now in times of economic uncertainty. And one of the first things we talked about, the second one was uh, or actually that was the first one was just check your brand, right? So, so and it, that's, that created, provoked a lot of questions, right? So there's a lot of misunderstanding around branding. So most people, when you say, you know, hey, um, what are your favorite brands, you know, or name a great brand or whatever, immediately they close their eyes and they start thinking about logos, right? So it's like, oh, this is a great, this is great branding. This is a great brand, what have you. And I'm like, yeah, so you got to recognize that there will be a visual component to that that's critically important, right? So that's a critically important part about it. But we're not talking about just your visual components of your brand. We're talking about 
the story that your community is telling about your business, right? So your brand is not what you say about your business to your community. It's what your community says about your business. That's your brand, right? So if you were to think about that, it's like when people are driving by, you know, Revolution Chiropractic and be like, hey, what do you know about these guys? Oh, yo, yeah, there's, there's, these guys are dot, dot, dot. So what do you want? Finish the sentence. Like, what do you want your community to say about you? You know, so when they drove by France and family chiropractic, I, I knew exactly what I wanted everyone to say about our business, whether they were an active patient or a previously active patient, or just somebody who we would consider a lead because they're a human being with a spine and a nervous system within a hundred miles of my clinic. Guess what? You're, you are just an, uh, an, an, a patient that's not active yet. Right? So I want everybody in the community to know who we are, what we do and why we do it. So Dr. Pete, I'd love to take the time we have today to talk about like, well, how do you, you know, how do you build your brand? Like how to, not just like in popularity, right? So like, how do you like literally put together your brand? Like, how do you, how do you put this thing together in such a way you're like, oh yeah, this, this is our story. This is, this totally represents us. And this is the story that I want my community to be telling about our business. Yeah. So I think with that, um, there's a framework we're going to follow. And the first thing we're going to start with, we're going to start to talk about the purpose of your brand. Okay. So what is the purpose of your brand? I mean, why does, why does your brand, why does your business exist? Right. You know, we talk about that every, every bit a business exists to solve a problem for someone else. Okay. So what is that? What is that problem that you solve for another person, another human being? What is that? What is the purpose of your brand? What are you doing? What is the problem that you're solving? So that's the first place, Dr. Stephen, we need to start is understanding what's the purpose of your brand? What's the purpose of your practice, your business? However you want to frame that out. What is the purpose? Why does your brand exist? And why is it important that it exists? What, what problems do you solve? Um, you know, why is that important that you solve it? And, and, and how do you solve it? And, you know, so like you said, we first come to our mind, close your eyes, imagine brands that are great brands. And then you see a logo that comes to your mind. Yeah, but if you ask yourself deeper, the question is, okay, but why did that brand come to your mind? Something that they're doing that brought it to your mind. Yeah, they might have done a great job with their graphic and their design, which you need to embrace that. that is, we're going to get to that. Yeah. But the first step is Dr. Steven is addressing the purpose. Well, if you think about like the biggest brands in the world now, right? So you can start with Google, right? So biggest brand in the world. What is Google? I mean, what a crazy name for a brand, right? So nobody knew what Google was when that came out, right? So they've created a word that's now used as a verb, which is a home run, by the way, right? So the purpose of Google was to organize all of the information that's ever existed on the planet, right? And make it reachable, right? That's the original search engines, right? So imagine having that as a purpose that you exist. The, the problem that you solve is I, I need to find out everything and anything all at once, 365, right? So 24-7, 365, right? So that's a problem that they solve was, oh, we have all this information captured now, but how do I find what I need to know? Like, that's the purpose of that brand. Facebook. Facebook's a, a great brand. It's a really well uh, well recognized brand. But you know the original purpose that Facebook was set out to solve was to connect us. It was about connection, right? Connecting people that shared um, uh, common interests, right, and um, could exchange ideas. There's a brand that's gone sideways because if you look at their branding now, right, it's about keeping you safe, right? So that's that's their TV commercial now. At what point did the Facebook branding? To generate from we're going to connect you so you can exchange information and ideas to we're going to keep you safe, right? There's an example of like changing the problem that you solve, right? I, I, you know what? I didn't know that that was a problem for me. I didn't know I needed people to keep me safe, right? So Whole Foods, we find it's like Whole Foods is a place where I know I can go and they're going to prioritize having healthier choices and organic sourcing, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, it's a place where I can go instead of having to run around five stores. The problem I solved was I don't have to go to six places and I don't have a hard time finding organic foods I can do in one shop, right? So Dr. Pete, it's about what problem do you solve, right? So, so the first thing you have to do when you're trying to establish your brand or build your brand is answer that question. Like, why do you exist? What problem in your community do you solve, right? So at Franson Family Chiropractic, we knew that we were all about pediatric development and optimizing adult health, right? We wanted to create a place where families could find a better way to better health. And it wasn't just a better health outcome. It was a better health experience, Dr. Pete. And that's what shaped our brand message, right? So the brand message is essentially a brand promise. 
It's a promise that you make into your community and you communicate that out into your community. It's like, do you have this problem? In other words, are you trying to solve this problem or issue or pain point? Are these your goals? You are trying to achieve these things, right? So that's all part of the brand promise when you say, well, come to France and Family Chiropractic because that's what we do here. This is what we do. This is why we do it and who we do it for. So this is such a this is such a rich conversation. I love that you brought up you know some of the examples that you did and and um, I think it's very practical. I think it's easier to see it on that large scale. You know, it's easier to see that. And hopefully, that if you start looking at bigger brands like the ones that publicly we see, like Amazon and these other ones, Whole Foods and Facebook, and you know, we look at these bigger brands, you can start to see okay which direction they're going. Uh, and then, okay, how does that distill down to you? So the second thing is once you identify like what is the purpose of your brand, what's the purpose of your practice, what problem do you solve? Um, you know, the second is what what is the vision story, right? So we've talked about this, you know, multiple times throughout this you know, podcast that your job as the CEO of your business, one of the primary objectives you have is to cast vision. You are the vision caster. You are casting and recasting vision, which is making sure that people can see ahead. They can see what you see. It's clear where we're going. It's clear what success looks like. It's also clear why this is why this is what success is. It's clear that this is what it is that we're working towards, we're moving towards. And not only do you see it first and foremost, but your team then sees it and wholeheartedly embraces that. And that's why they choose to come and be a part of this because they're a part of the manifestation of the vision. Okay. And then third is now your community sees it. They see the vision and they say, I want in, I want to come and be a part of this. And I feel like I'm a part of the vision because I'm a consumer in this product. I'm a consumer of this brand. I'm a consumer in this space. And I feel like I'm a part of that. That is the three levels. So the first is a vision is that you get crystal clear on what that vision is and you continue to revisit it and making sure that you're moving towards that vision. You don't lose sight of it. Number two, that your team clearly sees it they don't lose sight of it and they see practically how it applies to them in their specific role in the in the in the business and then third that your community sees it first your patients and they see where their role is in that and the community then can embrace that wholeheartedly so dr steven i think the second step here is vision story yeah so if you want your community to be telling a very specific story about you and your business in other words your brand in your community you better tell them the story, right? So you better teach them and tell them the story that you want them to be telling about you, right? So that's really the early stage of this is codifying that story and being super clear. What is our vision of success? Like if we know what the purpose is, like what is the purpose of this business? Why do we exist? What problem do we solve? What goals do we help people reach, right? There's our purpose. Now that's why do we exist? Vision story is what does success look like, right? So you get clear on being able to tell the story of like, this is what we do here and these are the experiences and outcomes people have here in our business because they do business with us. Now we're shaping our vision story and the brand promise is birthed from that. So it's all part of this really aligned process, right? So now we have that last, the third component of it, which is the behaviors, right? So it's like, okay, so we now, we've identified our purpose. We've clearly stated it to our to our team, to our patients, to our community, that this is who we are, this is what we do, this is why we do it, our purpose. This is what we do here, right? This is how we do it, this is who we serve, this is our story of the experiences that you can expect, the outcomes that you're gonna receive, that's your brand promise, right? Now, you have to deliver on that promise, right? So those are the behaviors. Remember, we don't tell you what success looks like, but we do tell you where it lives. And success lives when you have alignment between your core values, which of course, dictate your purpose, your vision story, which is what does success look like, and your behaviors. Your behaviors have to align so that when people hear your message and say, oh, that's me, and that's the thing, and now I need to walk in there. That's the place. That's what I'm looking for. They're going to walk in there, and your branding, your brand messaging, your brand promise has positioned you in such a way in the marketplace that they're going to come in with a set of expectations. And when you walk into your business, are those expectations met? Is there alignment between what you told them you did and why you did it and how you did it? What kind of outcomes you would get, what kind of experience they'd have? Is their experience and their outcomes aligned with what you promised, right? So when you see that alignment, that's where success lives and that's where sustainable success lives. So let me go back to the Facebook example when 
when Facebook, you know, which came out, what, 10 years ago or more, 15 years ago? I don't even know how long it's been. But isn't it amazing? They built the fastest growing social media platform in the world. It's incredible how ubiquitous it is. Everybody got onto Facebook, right? And, and they went painlessly to the largest platform in the world with billions of users. Right? Think about that, painlessly. Why? Because their behaviors were aligned with their brand promise, which was we're going to connect people that share like interests and can exchange information freely. No problems. Built a huge, su successful business. Look what's happened in the last three years when they changed their behavior, when they literally yeah. shifted from, to, from connecting people to we're going to keep you safe, which if you pay attention, you're going to hear that now when you watch the commercials on television is the Facebook's marketing now is all about our brand is we keep you safe, right? So that shift in branding and behavior has created enormous issues for a business. And I, I would suggest Dr. Pete will be their undoing. So the question then is, how does this translate to your business? So as you reflect now, just even letting this sink in and talking, Dr. Stephen, what you're talking about, I'm just going to embrace the, what you talked about, which was the brand promise. And really there is there, the question is, is there alignment? Okay. Are the behaviors in alignment? In other words, is there alignment between the message? Okay. So what you're saying to your community, but more importantly, what your community says about you, is there alignment between that and your vision of what you said that it should be is there alignment between the message your vision of what you said is going to be and then the behaviors which is the core values are the expression of they they are the how you showcase right how you demonstrate um what's most important is that what the community that it, that you are sharing your message with, is, is that what they are experiencing as they, as they encounter your brand, whether they are a prospect, a lead, or a cons active consumer, or a previously active consumer. Think about all stages of the, of the journey of a, of a person, because all of the people are, are, are seeing your brand, whether they have seen it for the first time, they've just heard about it and caught some wind of it, all the way through, I used to be a patient there, for years and now I'm no longer a patient. Does everyone on that entire spectrum, what are they saying? And your goal is that every stage of the journey, what's being said on that entire arc is, is that, right? It's that there was alignment, there is alignment between the message, the, my experience and, and my, the outcome from, from that. And that's why I think Dr. Stephen, we got to ask ourselves that now as, as business owners, CEOs looking at our business, that's where we need to focus in on and say, okay, very practically, how do you know? It's so critical, Dr. Pete, and it does become, it, this is a methodology like, for example, I think you guys are probably gonna hear this episode after the, um, at least the Denver Remarkable Attraction Immersion where you, know, you and I are gonna have this conversation on the Friday Night Live, right? So we're gonna be up there and we're gonna talk about branding and brand promise. This will be a big part of what we talk about. Um, but at the end of the day, this becomes this becomes an exercise that as the CEO, you want to be auditing yourself, right? So you may check yourself and it's and and it is something that can be it, it, it can be very pragmatic, right? You can say, okay, so what is our purpose? What problem do we solve? Okay, so do we convey that well in our brand messaging and our do we make that brand promise that if you have this problem, we can help you solve it. If these if you have these goals, we can help you reach it. This is who we are, what we do, why we do it. This is how we do it and who we do it for, right? That's the avatars. So you can speak into very specific listening, right? For the avatars, you can attract that ideal patient, that ideal practice member, that ideal customer who's saying, yeah, that's me and that's the thing and I want it now. They walk in the door with a set of expectations because you made a brand promise. You know, people talk about USP, unique selling proposition to differentiate in a marketplace. But what we're talking about here is a unique success proposition. It's not just a unique selling proposition. There's a unique success proposition where you're saying, listen, if these are your problems, we can help you solve them. If these are your goals, we can help you reach them. And then they come in with that set of expectations and then you have to deliver on that. Okay. So is their experience through your process, procedures, scripting, the relationships they build with you, the outcomes that they get with you, that all of that, is that congruent with what you promised? Is it aligned with your, what you promised? Because remember, it's that alignment and their experience of that alignment, either fully aligned or fully not aligned or somewhere in between 
that is what's going to shape their story about your business, which means ultimately when they dump back out into your community, that is your brand. It's the story that they, that they tell, that your community is telling about your business. Please stick around for more business insights from this week's bonus interview with our remarkable success partner dedicated to helping you more successfully help more people. Enjoy. What's up, Remarkables? Hey, it's Dr. Steven here, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new friend of ours, one of our success partners for The Remarkable Practice. I'm here with Keith Pendleton, a national law-based consultant who specializes in personal injury, and here we're to talk about his new release, Best Practice Forms Software. Keith, what's up, brother? It's great to see you. Thanks for jumping in and adding value to our listeners, Brian. Likewise, happy, happy to be here. All right, so uh, this, you know how this works, guys. So, uh, Keith, we have a challenge. I've got four questions I'm going to ask you, and we're going to get this done inside of seven minutes, right? So we're going to get right into it and right after it because, you know, you're talking to a bunch of busy chiropractors. You're talking to a bunch of busy CEOs, and what we look for as a CEO is leverage, right? So we're looking for scalability and durability, and we're always looking for sources of leverage so we can get more done and better return on our time, energy, focus, and money. So man, this is right in your wheelhouse, right? So you're hitting this right on target. So first question, who are you and what do you do? Well, my name's Keith Pendleton, historically been licensed uh, Pennsylvania attorney, and I help uh, chiropractors nationwide get personal injury accounts successfully paid and not just successful, but highly successfully paid. And we take out all the stress associated with injury and the key is the key to marketing the first rule of marketing is to want to market and we find through experience that the number one thing to build this area is that doctors first want to build it and the key to that is getting them paid effective beautiful all right so second question is always what problem do you solve like our ceos are listening right now and they know that the purpose of a business is to add value to another person or business by solving a problem for that person. So right. what problem does best practice forms software solve for our doctors? Absolutely. The absolute number one issue that overshadows all the problems in personal injury is how to become a secured creditor. And so what our system does is make the doctor a secured creditor. It's about having a right to be paid directly. If you don't have that right to be paid directly, that's where all the losses occur. And as long as the doctor establishes themselves as a secured creditor, it wipes out most of the payment problems associated with personal injury. Beautiful, man. Thank you for that. So, you know, people don't buy software, they don't buy systems, they don't buy processes or procedures, right? So nobody wants to buy products. What they want is they want outcomes. So what kind of outcomes can our doctors expect? What have you seen historically with the doctors that you're working with? Well, there are three types of PI. There's unrepresented cases where the patient doesn't have an attorney. There's untrusted attorney cases or non-trusted attorney cases and there's trusted attorney cases. For the unrepresented cases, uh, we find the doctors are getting paid in full at very successful rates. Uh, and in half the time it takes them when an attorney's involved. In the untrusted attorney cases, we find the doctors are either getting paid in full or they cultivate their secured interest in turning the attorney into a good referring partner. Okay, so there's a marketing component to it as well. With the trusted attorney cases, the attorneys love our system and we find that it just grows very organically through what I would call organic performance-based marketing. Uh, attorneys get what they need when they need it and they just naturally start referring as a result. So good, so good. All right, so I typically, you know, whenever I'm considering bringing on a new system, mm -hmm. purchasing a product, bringing in, you know, a, a some some new vendor or somebody that I'm gonna be working with, you know, or, or implementing a technology, whether it's, you know, on the administrative side or on the clinical side, I always ask two questions, like, is it effective and is it profitable, right? So you know, is this a profitable undertaking? Like, is this something that, you know, I understand that, you know, when you can open up your practice to more effectively help people that are involved in PI, 
-hmm. in personal injury cases, what a great way to introduce people to chiropractic care, right? So you're creating a, you're, you're, you're enabling our doctors, regardless of whether they have experience or they have a passion for personal injury. Some maybe have an aversion or a fear of personal injury, and you're creating a, a land, a, a soft landing for people to come into an office and you'll help this process will help guide them through how to optimize, you know, and how to take care of yeah. PI cases properly. I see that. Right. So, um, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is this a profitable undertaking? It is. And, and what I find is on average, chiropractors mismanage their PI to the tune of about $5,000 per PI case. So you can do the math. It scales very quickly. If you're seeing two to four new PI cases per month, you're looking at ten dollars to $20,000 a month in improved earnings, um, proved, proved gross revenue that you weren't seeing before. There's an investment, an upfront investment of time. Most of it is an investment of time. Yeah, there's money too, because there's training and systems that you want to put in place. But once that system's put in place, it just runs so smoothly. It's almost on autopilot once you put it in place. Beautiful. My man, you have played so well with this game. You've played along and you've left yourself a minute and a half for a bonus question. So I'm oh, going to ask you the question that other doctors pull me aside because you're one of our success partners. You're at our live events, right? Interacting with our community and you're answering these questions on a regular basis and you serve a whole spectrum of chiropractors based on their philosophy, their techniques, their approach to practice, et cetera. So what about that practitioner that says, man, I just I'm really uncomfortable taking PI cases into my clinic. It really doesn't necessarily fit with our model or our culture, what have you. Does this really help them, you know, get that, integrate that into their practice? That's the, the whole mantra of my company is cash PI. It's about not turning it into a personal injury mill or a PI mill, but feathering our systems into successful wellness-based practices so you preserve that balance. It's all about balance. So sometimes when you go to uh, training programs for personal injury, it gets really super heady in that training you know, like combating the, the, the payers and everything like that, we take that all away, okay? So that it's stress-free. So you can build your cash practice and that this element can fuel that without any kind of interruption. I love it, man. I love it. All right, well, I'm intrigued. And I'm sure our listeners are as well. If they want to learn more about what you're doing at Best Practice Forms Software, how do they find you? How do they get in touch with you? So the the... Best way I would go is to KeithPendletonJD.com because you'll get everything at that one website. Um, the software, which we just released, super powerful, based on 20 years of experience, testing, and, and proven results, is free. And if you want to go right to that software website, the splash page is bestpracticeforms.com. It's free. Um, the only the only cost will be your time of implementing it on an iPad. And we have all the instructions for how to do it. So uh, that's a great way to, to learn more. Um, Excellent. Can I get those URLs one more time? And I'll put them in the show notes down below. I'll have our team make sure that both of those links are in place so that people can contact you and learn more. Perfect. So KeithPendletonJD.com and BestPracticeForms.com. Awesome. All right, guys, our success partner, Keith Pendleton, thank you for who you are and all you do for chiropractors and chiropractic and helping our people help more people. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic, and what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.